Um, my name is Raoul Krauthausen, and uh, I want to talk with you about um, what is a city. If we think about cities, I would say we, it's all about usability of a city. We live in cities in different housing concepts, like as families, as singles, as hotel guests. We work in cities inside or outside of buildings, and we are doing yeah, free time activities like hobbies, um, going shopping, making party, whatever. And this is something we are doing alone or with friends. But how would it be if you can only use part of these activities, if you only can visit part um, of the working places, if you can only live in, 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 in some special type of housing, or if you are not able to enter a party location. Imagine yourself sitting in the chair you're right on, and, never, and that you never could stand up again. How would it feel like to live in a city? Which kind of activities can you still do? And for me, and it's obvious, there is an inequality on how we use our cities. So, a friend of mine and me, we started an online project called wheelmap.org. And wheelmap.org is an online platform where people like you and us can rate places by accessibility on a smartphone or on a web browser. We do this since three years. And we collected more than 343,000 places all over the world. And what we found out that most of these places are marked in, in Germany, and if we make a, a Bundesliga table out of it, um, <laughs> we see that Munich is still um, yeah, a leading uh, a city, uh, gaining, uh, winning the uh, Bundesliga table. And, um, but you can also see that Mainz, for example, seems to be, according to our WeMap users, the most accessible city in Germany. Hamburg is doing quite well, can do a bit, a bit better, but you see also that Berlin isn't appearing here. Um, if we look also deeper into our data, uh, we found out, so we, we made a big step forward to equality so that people can access and know which places are accessible in advance before they go their way. And what we found out that more than 80,000 places are still not accessible. 80,000 places. And most of them only because they have one or two steps in the entrance. So our organization and I, we asked us, what can we do with this? So we started an online platform, which is called tausendundeinerampe.de. In English, it means 1001 ramp. Um, where we try to um, build a platform where people can ask for ramps and donate for ramps so that we can distribute them to make a bakery accessible, for example, or a barber shop or a disco. Because a lot of places are not accessible only because one and two steps in the entrance. So we did a small step ahead to the next accessibility level uh, for equality, for uh, usability in a city. But that's still not enough for me. What we need, and what I'm dreaming of, is a new awareness for this topic. So we started to develop a school program um, where um, we tried to uh, educate young people in uh, universities and in schools and wherever young people gather to get, come together. And uh, we want them to experience on their own how it would be to live in a city with barriers by sitting them in a wheelchair, uh, trying to, to find solutions um, just by their own experience. And we don't want to educate them like teaching. We just want to give them the experience how it would be. So it's a step ahead according to um, equality. Our next part is what we learned is that we invented the idea of social days 
together with companies. We're doing it together with Immobilien Scout in Berlin and in Munich. Um, we're working together with the Deutsche Post, where these companies send their employees out to the cities they work in and they work for, because they are cities dealing, they're companies dealing with city topics, um, to give them a new insight on how the city they are working for and in is. But the most important part for me is that we need to educate architects. Architects who are becoming architects in the future, architects who are already architects, and though those people are in charge for building buildings, planning buildings, constructing buildings, buildings that last longer than 50 years. So if we don't start to educate these people and to show them how it is, uh, or how to build an accessible building uh, like the Leishalle, which seems to be partly accessible. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I got to the stage, so I, I don't want to, um, yeah, I want to, don't want to blame anyone. Um, but it's, uh, we needed ramps, for example. Ramps, uh, we, we, we try to distrib distribute in the future. And we already distributed um, more than 50 ramps in Germany. And this year we want to um, make it up to 1,000. So it's quite a big challenge. If you want to help us, <laughs> you're free too. Um, so it's the next step ahead to equality. And we also try to empower volunteers who ask us how can they take part of the uh, movement. And um, we, we also want to give them tools on how to gather, come together and on, on how to um, plan their mapping parties, how we call them. But in the end, I'm here because I want you to become an ambassador, to become an ambassador for making our cities more usable for people with all kind of different mobility um, yeah, abilities. And the only task I have for you is get involved and like us on Facebook. <laughs>